It is time that I show you the build that I use on the Revelation. This is a build that I usually keep for myself. Not many players know what rigs and modules I have on this ship. The Revelation did serve me really well over the last two years. The This ship will probably be used to build the Chemosh when the Chemosh is available. The Chemosh is the Blood Raider Dreadnought and that is my my next capital ship goal, at least in this game. I will probably lose all the kill marks when I sacrifice this ship to build the Chemosh, but I think it would be a very interesting new fresh start and I believe the Chemosh will be a very lethal dreadnought. And I think that is the the proper way how to end the journey with the revelation. This ship is currently my most successful ship to date. It surpassed the Balgorn and it also surpassed the Ortus. And I'm very very proud of this Dreadnought. So, uh, in a moment I'll open up the fitting window and then I will go from the... I'll start from the weapons and then I will slowly move through the modules and then I will open up the rig window and that's where a lot of you will be very surprised because I believe most of you know that I used to fly super expensive ships and nowadays most of my ships are actually very cheap. The only ship that's not cheap is this one. Uh, this revelation still has the, the, old, uh, the old style that I use. So the Imperial Navy Pulse Letters have a 65 km range, an accuracy file of 19.5 tracking 0.58 in the medium slots quad webs and one scrambler this is the default layout that i use triple a type armor hardeners and these are the hardeners that i used on the balgorn a c type reactive although i have a b type unfortunately it is not equipped at the moment the armor repairs are C-type, the capacitor battery is a Mark IX capacitor battery and the damage control is the all-around damage control. The capacitor on this ship lasts 5 minutes and 08 seconds, which honestly is not bad. Uh, the capacitor on this ship is about capacitor stable if I don't shoot. And you have to keep in mind that the Revelation has armor resistance bonuses and I have almost well, I, I, I like to call it 500,000 uh, hit points on armor, but it's 433,000. I'm working on the new skills. It will be about 550,000 when the skills are completed. And well, as for the rigs, in the old-fashioned way, uh, it's pretty bling. This is the, again, the same way of, uh, the same way that I used to build chips a long time ago. And this is why the uh, Revelation remains as one of the um, only expensive ships that I currently have. It's focused on maximum possible resistance and armor repair. 63, 78, 75 and 73% uh, is the default cold value on the armor resistance. 2,000, 2 million hit points. 2,000 hit points, yeah, uh, it's, it's 2 million hit points. When the modules are active, the resistances go go up to 95, 92. When the yellow hardener kicks in, it's 98, 95, and when the damage control is activated, all the stats go to 99, 98% resistance. Which in return means that this thing is a brick. And uh, the Revel this Dreadnought might be one of the most heavily armored ships in the game at the moment and so far you know the tank uh, did do a really good job didn't have a good opportunity to test out that tank because each time i i take that build out well no one wants to play with the revelation but every time i swap the build then i guess the the salt the salty guys think that they have a chance but still the revelation, even with a different build, is still extremely tanky. And while well, the first uh, warm-up target for Ray was a Apocalypse Striker, 
This build that I currently use is the build with dual tracking computers and the large, well not the large, but the, the main turrets, the capital main turrets. 2.2 billion, a very solid kill, excellent loot drop as well. Usually I go with the full tank build, but I decided to do something different for, for a change and I went with tracking computers. Next target, an Ortus. Well, now this pallet is the same pallet that we uh, encountered a couple of weeks ago. We killed, uh, we killed their bar guest, and well, now I killed his Ortus. Well, that's interesting. Let's take a look at kill and yeah, 8.2 billion Ortus kill. The Ortus used the heavy assault missile launchers, a close range PvP Ortus. Okay. Interesting. And they use tier 4 rigs. That's why this Ortus is ridiculously expensive. You know, not a. I would say not a bad build. Uh, not really sure why tier 4 rigs, tier 3 rigs, you know, do just fine, but you know, uh, I roll a, a heavily integrated revelation, so yeah, can't really complain. Now, uh, this is a very odd little moment where all of a sudden a bunch of ships just popped in and you know I'm just chilling here just chilling on the gate to see what's up I have the heavy not the heavy uh, the high angle weapons installed not really the default chunk build that I usually run on this ship mostly because again I decided to do something different and I felt like trying out the Trying out the high-angle weapons, and well, now I wish that I actually had the previous strong build because attack. would be a good opportunity to to see how much it We're can tank. Attack. But I'm not worried. Again, I have a We're lot of tank, attack. so I can sit here all day long if I she if I feel managed. like. It. Now, I assume, well, I don't assume, I know for a fact that all of these Apocalypse Strikers over there have have the so-called, I think it's called fo yeah, Focus Crystal. So, you know, let them, let them charge up the, the Focus Crystal. I'm very curious to know how much, how much this build can hold. It can hold a, lo a, a lot, because it still has a lot of armor resistance. Now the thing with uh, with lasers, one thing that I believe uh, this player forgot, lasers do really well on shields, but their damage heavily drops off on armor. After all, armor has a much higher natural re resistance to EM and thermal, so even with, I don't know, like, I guess even with 100,000 DPS, that's not going to do much, even when those focus crystals charge up. And I'm just chilling here, eating all the damage, seeing how much uh, the armor repair can repair. Now, here my build is, again, focused for a high angle. Uh, I have a high angle weapon build, which means that I focused on tracking. The tank has been sacrificed in order for uh, for the tracking computers to be activated and it also has been sacrificed to add the tracking computer general units. I have two of them, usually I have a capacity battery unit and a armor repair unit so that I can have maximum possible tank and well as you can see I don't have to use the the brick tank build to sit and and just take all that damage they're not doing much again lasers don't do much damage to armors now 
if I had the main turrets by by any chance, I would probably be able to go through the nightmare in couple hits because my main turrets have about they sometimes can slap up to two hundred thousand when they want to to hit the target. Of course, the nightmare with the shield field bubble is a big target, so even if they are moving, the tracking will be enough. But unfortunately. I don't think that my high angle weapons, high angle turrets, will have enough DPS to go through the nightmare, so that's why I am not opening fire. If I had uh, the main turrets, the nightmare would that nightmare would be in some in some trouble. Now I'm trying to calculate how much damage would I take if I were in the classic chunk build. I, I think they would not be able to to do much. I mean, they're not doing much anyways, but with the previous builds, that would be... would be much much more funny to, to see what would happen. Because the reactive armor hardener or shield hardener helped a lot against against lasers and against the rail guns. Basically, all weapons that have two damage types are going to suffer if your target has the reactive hardeners. The capacitor doing well, the capacitor battery doesn't have to be used at the moment, although I can technically use the capacitor battery and just keep the armor repairers running at all times. Although there is no need for that at the moment. Somehow my alt also survived. I, I expected the alt to to go down but Somehow the alt lived, not really sure. Not really sure how that happened, but okay. Now, here I got one idea. I could technically go jump, ref it, take the... Take the chalk build and come back. You know what? I'll actually do that. I'll jump through. I'll go... Take the the trunk build and I will jump back because why not? Perfect opportunity to to test a new build. Well, not a new build, but a perfect opportunity to test the the full trunk build. Okay, waiting for the sign to open and then I am going to be jumping through and then it is going to be eating time because. I'm after blood. I want to see how much uh, damage I'll take with this build. Again, I haven't really had a good chance to date to uh, to test this tank out properly. I had a chance to test the tank out with the previous build, but uh, that was a limited test and was with different rigs. With these rigs, it should be much, much better. But unfortunately, it seems like they did smell that something was up and well they dipped okay fair enough this is what I was talking about every time I change into an actual proper tank build and when I'm after when I'm after blood no one wants to play with the revelation but every time I do something experimental and you know I reduce the tank a little bit everyone jumps on on this ship and they still fail because they st still can't break the tank so, the mighty apocalypse striker with the focus crystal with level 30 to level 45 implant failed against a non-brick tanked revelation. That is hilarious. Oh well, uh, I guess back to the back to the previous builds and well, let's see if they come again. Let's see if if we have a spy in corp that is that is watching uh, what we do and let's see if they are going to come again. That was a cursed cyclone. Next target we have a Gnosis. Okay, fair enough. 
Ignosis with a cloak. Okay, that's that's kind of interesting. Which probably means a very very cursed Gnosis, but we're about to find that out. My friend will decloak the Gnosis. And there is Ignosis decloaked. Excellent. Nice work. Well, they didn't even move. They basically cloaked and hoped for the best. Well, unfortunately, not. Not a lucky day for the Gnosis. People, people like to ask me which capital ship has better tracking. The Revelation or the Naglafar? It's uh, very interesting because the Naglafar should have better tracking, but I hit targets much easier with the Revelation, so there is there is more to it. There, there are definitely some uh, some other things that you have to uh, include. The next target, we have one RB2 cover tops. Now, I did some digging and I asked some, uh, some players around this. RB apparently was part of the previous fleet and apparently they were attempting to to come back now that fleet I'm not really sure where they uh, where they went to they just vanished from the local when I when the sign log got opened so uh, I believe they might logged out in the system or they perhaps have jumped in uh, in the in the other deeper systems who knows? Uh, all I know that if they come back, they will have to, they'll have to face a proper chunk revelation, which you know uh, hasn't seen any proper fleet to try and get it, unfortunately, because again, no one wants to play with the revelation when the revelation is out for blood with a proper build. But hey, I mean that's that's how you play if you go and. Attack the target when you think that you can win, so it's all good. Now this RB looks interesting. Uh, perhaps it is one of the new cores. The it looks like the Cyber X core, but I'm not really sure. I could be wrong. Let's just go by the guess that it has the Cyber X Nano core. We will find out in any case because the target has been destroyed. Well, it was expensive. One expensive little RB. Solo PvP RB build. Well, okay, not a bad build. I like it. I used to fly the RB a lot. Next, we have a prophecy. The prophecy tried to burn towards the gate with a micro warp drive. Well, you guess what happens when. I mean, you, you could see what happens when you try to micro warp drive towards the gate with, the prof with a micro warp drive. I mean,. Against the revelation with lasers, yeah, not, not a smart idea to do. Signature radius and a 90 degree angle means that I hit without a problem. Next, we have another cyclone. This cyclone has been in the, in the system for quite a while. Not really sure what they were doing. And since my alt has been unbanned for a while now, I still use my alt very actively. Although I'm fairly sure, I'm fairly sure the the force veered to quick to to quit movement will start to spam report again. But what can you do about that? It is what it is. And the cyclone went down in three hits. Let's quickly take a look at the kill. 132 Okay, not bad. Next we have an apocalypse. A default classic apocalypse. 18,000 first hit. It didn't do much damage, only 18,000. But that's fine. Mm, 
the alt is going to web the apocalypse in a moment. Well, actually, web then scrambled, so okay. And the third hit should eliminate the apocalypse, and there we go. Apocalypse has been eliminated. You know, it's a fairly chill, fairly chill camp today. Quite enjoyable, honestly. Let's take a look at the kill. 592 million, not bad. Next, we have one Caracal 2. Okay, this is this is a very interesting ship. It's a very rare ship as well. You don't see a lot of Caracal 2s around. And well, it took the first hit in hull and the other ships have destroyed the Caracal. Very nice kill as well. Always nice when we catch one rare ship and the uh, Caracal 2 definitely one of the more rare ships that you can find in the game. Mostly because the tier 10 assault cruisers are not used much, unfortunately. Although they are really good and I do recommend them because they're really fun to fly. 1 billion? Well, 1.07 billion to be more accurate. Next target we have a tornado. That is, for some reason, blue to my alt, but... Yeah, let's just go and tackle the tornado with the alt because why not? Or not? The tornado got executed by by someone. I assume that the tornado got executed by one of our capital ships. It wasn't me, obviously. It was my friend. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at the kill here. 320 million, a sniper tornado. Not bad. And well... With that being said, that was a very chill a little run today overall. Uh, the Revelation is a very fun boat. I don't fly the Revelation as much as I used to. Mostly because I'm trying to save the ship for the Chemosh. After all, the Revelation has to, you know, survive until the Chemosh is released. Uh, but I have to say, surviving is not really a big problem with that ship. Again, uh, it's very difficult to kill it, as you have seen today. It is definitely also quite hard to catch on the gate, because there are some tricks that you can do with the capital ships, which makes gate jumping extremely safe and easy. And all you need to have is an afterburner, or preferably a micro warp drive, and basically nothing can catch you, nothing can slow you down fast enough. Uh, until you reach the gate, so the capital ships are definitely interesting and the only capital ship that I am personally looking for in the future is the Chamosh, again that's the Blood Raider Dreadnought, and after that I think I will not be flying any capital ships because there's only one capital ship, well two technically, that I am interested in but uh, I'm not going to fly Titans or, or the Super Carriers I don't have where to park them and I personally am not really interested in those ships. My maximum capital ship will be the Dreadnought, and so far, again, the Revelation has done a amazing job, a really, really uh, rewarding ship so far, and very glad that this Revelation is one of the very few ones that has uh, over a, over a thousand, well, over, over 909 kill marks. Not really sure if there is any other Dreadnought with the same amount of kill marks. Uh, I didn't count a lot recently, but I I believe I'm around 2,000 or something, 2,000 kills with the Revelation, and the amount of ESC destroyed with that is also uh, a lot higher than the Ortos, I believe, and a little higher than the than the Balgorn. Again, I haven't done the math. I have to go and uh, spend the whole day basically calculating all the all the kills one by one because there is no other way for me to uh, actually get the accurate number but with that being said hope that you enjoyed this little run with the relation and overall uh, stay safe fly safe and I'll see you next time